Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface and that small unassuming building just down below where I've flown over is actually a hidden secret dungeon in Final Fantasy XV and there's something very special about it as well. You see, there's no enemies in it. It's a complete platforming dungeon and it's absolutely insane, let me tell you that for nothing. Now, there's a couple of little tricks that you need to access it, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to combine that with also another secret so you can discover this hidden dungeon and also get 50,000 experience points for the privilege. And the way that you do that is, number one, you've got to have the Type F Regalia. This is the Regalia that you get when you complete the game. Cindy allows the Regalia to fly because the area that it's in can only be accessed through flight. Also, it can only be accessed at night time as well. Going there during the day, you're just going to be standing around for hours. It won't let you in. So I'm now going to fly over to the Stalum and start this extra part of the quest, giving us 50,000 experience points. So when you get to Lestalem, you have to wait till at least 9pm at night, 2100 hours in game time. It's 1am here, so I'm absolutely okay, because this part also can only be completed at night time. And as you can see, I'm on the far eastern side of the town here, just on the main road. So I'm going to take this side alleyway by the restaurant and then hang a right into the back alleys well, hey, take a left, go up towards these stairs and just stop at this window here and listen in to a very interesting conversation between two former thieves reminiscing about some loot that got dropped off that they never picked up and oh, blah, 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 blah. When you have actually completed the full length of this conversation, it will actually trigger a quest in your quest log and send you back to where we've just been in Ravatok. Now, the quest marker for this seems to be a little bit skew if because if you follow it, it'll actually take you to the nearby petrol station and to the hot dog vendor or gas station if you're so inclined, depending on where you live. So, no, this is not the mysterious building that we're searching for. Get back onto the road, and it will allow you to fly immediately. So just take off when you can. Fly over to the north, and you'll come across some rocks in front of you, and then behind it, there is that secret area. You can't access this area unless you have the Regalia Type F, or have got yourself involved in some awful shenanigans. Now, there's something else very tricky here, and it's the landing. You see, the Regalia F can only land on roads, and this small yellow strip here is the game telling you this is the only road in this area. It's very small. It's surrounded by rocks. You can just see it in the distance there, and that is all we have to land on. So what you need to do is give yourself plenty of turning arc and lower the regalia as much as possible without landing immediately. If I landed then, I'd just go plowing straight into the rocks. The regalia would blow up. And of course, if you fail to land the regalia in game and it's destroyed, it's game over. Bit harsh, but there you go. So I'm trying to lure myself at every given opportunity, putting the brakes on as well. Make sure that you're not accelerating. You do not want speed here. Now, this could be me being overtly cautious, but I think landing the regalia is actually pretty difficult. There I go. I'm going in for the land now, plonking myself on the strip, and thankfully coming to a nice little close. From here, you can disembark from the regalia or drive it if you want, but it's going to be a little bit awkward with all the creatures around. And of course, if you're in the regalia when there's a creature around, it will stop and you'll have to get out and fight. But there's a good modem of transport for you to do where you don't have to stop and fight. You can just run through creatures and that is getting the chocobo out. Once mounted up, or if you want to go by foot, feel free to do so. It's your gameplay. Head in a northeasterly direction. For the most part, you'll be able to see where the suspicious building is. And just before you get there, you'll find this chicane area which leads up into the mountains. Follow this around and you'll get to the building. Pitios Dungeon. 
Now, from here on in, by when you get to the steps, you pretty much leave your party members behind. But as long as you're not actively in the dungeon area, they'll still class as part of your group. So don't worry that you're completing the quest on your own. Everybody will get 50,000 experience points. And if I stop here, I just thought I saw something jumped up and yes... There's an item up there, but that is actually part of Pitios. No, what we want is just squirreled away in this corner here. Pick up the Magitech core and you'll get 50,000 experience points. But I would recommend, which I didn't do, attaching any Moogle charms that you have to characters that you want to boost up. Because then you'll get even more experience points for doing that quest as well. And this... This is the entrance way to Pitios. All we have to do now is wait until nightfall. It's now 9 p.m. I'm going back around the corner. Notice now that that symbol is glowing white. Jump through the little break and then just touch it. And suddenly it leads to an elevator taking us deep, deep down underground. And when you turn around, the first thing that we see is spikes are falling from this dungeon. Yes, this is a no enemy dungeon. All that's here are traps and tricks and platforming elements and we have to find out how to negotiate our way in here. And I've got to tell you, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had in a video game. It was incredible. So if you want to see more of the Pitios dungeon itself, I can't do a guide, I can do a run through for you. Let me know in the comments section down below. But I'm leaving it here because if you just want to have a play yourself, feel free. I ain't got any problem with that whatsoever. So I hope that you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links are in the description down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Next up, we're going to have a look at Warping, and Warping is a great offensive and defensive ability in combat. Noctus will throw his sword and then warp to it, covering vast distances in literally the blink of an eye.